Now we're going to continue our series on uh, Ballad. This one's going to focus on uh, Mr. Levine again. There's a story here from WJHL. Uh, this is from December of 2022, just last year. It says, Ballad Health Post Quarterly Loss. CEO says, More Challenges Ahead. Uh, goes on to say here, CEO Alan Levine says, Multiple factors leave hospital facing a very challenging near future. Ballad posted $9.5 million operating loss in the quarter of July 1 to September 30th. Now, as a CEO of a hospital, I mean, this should be his number one priority, right? And should have been from day one when he came here in uh, 2014. And I want the staff at Ballad to, to understand, Mr. Levine works for you. Yeah, you get a check from Ballad, but in reality, he works for you. The things he does over there in the old ivory castle, um, you know, his office isn't in the hospital. I mean, God forbid he has to go into the hospital. Um, the things he does should 100% be focused. We just talked about here the loss that, they, that uh, Ballad had. So let's see what Mr. Levine's been doing. Uh, here's from the uh, Daily Commercial. This is a Florida newspaper out of Tallahassee. Uh, Lieutenant Governor... Uh, Jeanette Nunez and former Agency of Healthcare Administrator, Administration Secretary Alan Levine are co-chairing a committee that would help shape health care plans for incoming Governor Ron DeSantis. Obviously, this was about four years ago, but this was uh, 2018 when the merger was happening. But Mr. Levine is helping Florida. He's on a committee there. This is from 2022, University Accreditation Tussle Rhetoric Ramps Up. This is from Florida Politics. Goes on to say here, uh, Alan Levine, a key member of the State University System Board of Governors, fired another round of notes back and forth late Wednesday. Uh, Levine followed up uh, with his first terse response Wednesday. Uh, this is Florida. Let's make sure Mr. Levine understands uh, geography. Tennessee. He's in Tennessee. This was Florida. This is Florida. Ron Sanders Health Panel uh, Explores Empowering Patients. Healthcare Executive Alan Levine, who is helping lead the health committee. Florida. 2021. Board of Governors member alleges improper influence on FSU presidential Search. Alan Levine sent a letter to the Board of Governors Chancellor Marshall Crosser III on Sunday questioning whether a letter from the President's Southern Association to college and schools and commissions. Anyway, it goes on and on here. Uh, Board of Governors. Mr. Levine's uh, writing letters corresponding. Florida. Let's go over here. Schedule 14A information from the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, also known as the SEC. This is going to be hard to see, so I'll read it for you. It's from the official document from the Securities and Exchange Commission. Directors have elected Quentin S. Blackford and Alan M. Levine to fill the open and newly created directorship. Hmm. Levine will receive a non-qualified stock option grant to purchase shares of the company's common stock, with an equity value of $275,000. Hmm. Oxygen. Where's Oxygen? Oh my goodness, look. Oxygen. Alachua, Florida. This is a Form 8-K from the United States Security and Exchange Commission. This form proves that Mr. Levine is getting paid from, Al from this company in Alachua. It's not a lot. I mean, I guess 45000 a week or so isn't enough for Mr. Levine. He's needed a little, uh, I don't know, a little money to blow every now and then, maybe casino money or something. I don't know. Uh, Alan Levine reduced student loan debt. Now, this is actually, look to Florida as an example. This is actually an article he wrote for Florida Politics recently. You would think if Ballard is losing that much money, his 100% focus would be on Ballad and the people that work there. And something that should be mentioned, the patients. But yet he's not. Look at all this Florida stuff. 
Look at all of it. And this is just to tip the iceberg here. Uh, something we'll do later here, but just something to think about. Charitable hospitals, general requirements for tax exemption under Section 501c3, which is a nonprofit 501c3, which is what ballot is. Most nonprofits, uh, especially in the healthcare business, are. No substantial part of the activities can consist of carrying on propaganda or otherwise attempting to influence legislation. Influence legislation. Now, I'm not saying that the hospital's doing all this work in Florida, but Mr. Levine sure is. So does that mean that Mr. Crow, when he changed the law to allow ballot to become valid, was he just sitting there sipping on a little sweet tea one day on his own? He didn't get approached by Mr. Levine or anyone within ballot to change legislation? The IRS clearly says he can't do that. All right, that's all I got for today. But just remember, those that work at Ballot, he works for you as much as you work for Ballot. And from these documents, he seems to be working a lot in Florida. He must have some kind of political aspiration, maybe. Maybe he's wanting to go into politics. Well, we all know nobody here is going to vote for him. And I've had several thousand people say, we'll help him pack. He can move right back. Thank you, guys.